The world watched in shock yet again as Israeli troops withdrew after a long siege from Al Shifa Hospital on April 1st. The death toll was catastrophic. Palestinian news agency Wafa reported that hundreds of bodies of civilians were found at different corners of the hospital building by Gaza authorities following the withdrawal. A large number of bodies were even found burnt and decomposed. This is the latest, latest instance of Israel's very calculated attack on health facilities and those seeking shelter in them. We go to Abdul for more on the situation there. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. Very horrific, uh, hor horrifying scenes that came out in the media yesterday showing the extent of the Israeli slaughter that took place, the carnage that took place. Could you maybe give us some more details as to what happened, you know, what was the siege for uh, according to Israel and the, what kind of toll it has taken on Palestinians? Well, Prashant, uh, as usual, Israel has used the excuse of uh, Hamas taking shelter in uh, various places, various civilian establishments, including the hospital, uh, hospitals, and has attacked uh, in the last uh, six months. If you see uh, all hospitals uh, inside uh, Gaza, and Al Shifa, in, in fact, has been attacked several times in the past using the same excuse that is has been used by. Hamas to launch attacks on Israel has been a center for Israel, sorry, Hamas's operations and so on and so forth. So that there was nothing new here. Um, apart from the fact that uh, unlike the, in the earlier situations where they came, they attacked and in few hours or something, they left uh, the premises there. They came on uh, March 18. They took over control of the hospital premises where uh, apart from the more than 100 patients uh, there were uh, hundreds others who were taking shelter uh, because as we all know uh, since the war began hospitals have been used by the Palestinians uh, as a shelter home uh, considering that uh, they, they will not come under attack but uh, uh, Israel, uh, Israeli forces marched in on a March 18 and till uh, April 1st, they basically completely destroyed the building, uh, burnt it. They basically dug out, uh, in fact, the, uh, the cemetery which was created uh, to uh, bury some of the uh, people who, were, who died during the seas, earlier uh, uh, raids and so on and so forth in, on, uh, on the hospitals and on, on, on the nearby areas. And uh, uh, also killed uh, some of the uh, Palestinians who were taking shelter inside. So all the destruction uh, was uh, visible. One could only see it once they left uh, the premises on uh, on Monday. Uh, and that has basically uh, exposed the, the level of devastation which has been caused by the Israelis inside the Al-Shifa hospitals. The images are there in the public domain for uh, people to see. Right, Abdul, what has the kind of response been to this incident? Like you said, even by Israeli standards, this has been a shocking siege. Well, uh, Prashant, uh, if you see, Israel has been, uh, again, uh, have completely denied that, that they have killed any uh, Palestinian citizens. They claim that whoever was killed inside the hospital for 14 days, they were all Hamas operatives. Uh, of course, without providing any evidence, and 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 this claim has been completely refuted by the Palestinians, including Hamas, which has said that uh, none of those people who were killed were Hamas operatives. Most of the people were those who were taking shelter, and not only in Al Shifa Hospital. By the way, people from the nearby buildings were also brought in and uh, shot dead. Uh, inside the hospital by the Israeli forces. Uh, the allegation, these are the allegations. Of course, uh, then the, if you see World Health Organization has said that the, uh, the patients uh, were killed. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, this has happened uh, several other times in the past. Uh, and of course, they have condemned, but uh, uh, beyond that, there has nothing that nothing more has happened. There are eyewitnesses uh, from the Palestinian uh, Red Crescent Society who have claimed that um, uh, uh, most of the people who, who who are basically the bodies were found inside the hospital were civilians uh, or the people who were dug up uh, from the cemetery uh, from the uh, from inside the hospital. And uh, there is there has been a bite widespread condemnation and there has been calls for uh, action against Israel. There has been, uh, this basically proves that how Israel is carrying out its genocide uh, inside uh, Gaza. All those reactions uh, have 
come from across the world. Uh, uh, apart from the fact that, of course, the close uh, Israel allies like U.S. has reiterate, have reiterated their uh, standard uh, reactions, which basically is to investigate uh, uh, what has happened. Uh, uh, and of course, they don't uh, care uh, after a point uh, that such atrocities are being committed without any action taking against Israel. In fact, you see even on Tuesday, Israel carried out uh, an attack on the aid workers, killing seven of them. Most of them are foreign nationals and nothing so far has happened uh, on that as well. So it seems that Israel has complete impunity as if now. Continuing impunity, of course. And Abdul also finally wanted to get your views also on the fact that in addition to all these atrocities, Israel also clearly deciding to target uh, media organizations which cover these atrocities. The latest bill regarding Al Jazeera, the crackdown on Al Jazeera is one example. Could you tell us a bit about that also? Uh, well, uh, that is another uh, way of kind of Israel kind of trying to shutting down whatever little information which is uh, coming out from uh, the region from Gaza and from, of course, the other occupied Palestinian territories where their forces are directly involved in committing uh, humanitarian violations, committing war crimes and genocidal act. And, and the new law basically gives the Israeli government power to shut down Al Jazeera in particular, uh, because that was the only major channel which was which had a local uh, base, which has correspondents uh, in the region, which were reporting on a daily basis what was happening. So allaging Al Jazeera to basically uh, kind of collaborating with Hamas, calling it a terrorist organization, uh, 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 the bill basically gives Netanyahu government power to shut it down, to seize all its uh, equipment and uh, basically shut down its website as well. Uh, so that, that that is the law. Of course, it says it is a temporary law, but we know the history of Israel has been, uh, all these laws have been temporary, but we have been re uh, re renewed several times in the past. So uh, it says that uh, this law will be valid till July 31st. Uh, uh, but it can, of course, there there is a provision to renew it. Uh, 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 it basically will, if it is implemented, uh, and uh, as I said before, Netanyahu has already claimed that it will be implemented as soon as possible. Uh, it would would mean that the Al Jazeera will have to withdraw all its. Uh, 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 offices and equipment from the country. And that will mean a significant shutting down of the flow of information. So world will have less information uh, uh, to kind of uh, know that what is what Israel is exactly doing uh, inside, uh, of course, inside Gaza and other occupied territories. Right, Abdul, thank you so much for that update. But do stay back. We'll come back to you for the next story. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan suffered a major defeat when opposition parties won the local body polls in key cities including Istanbul and Ankara. The contest in Istanbul was keenly watched as Erdogan and his AKP party pulled all stops to regain the city from the incumbent mayor Ikram Imamoglu but failed miserably. What does this defeat mean for Erdogan in Turkey? We go back to Abdul. Welcome back, Abdul. Very interesting election results from uh, across Turkey. We know that I believe last year Erdogan won the elections. It was quite a decisive victory. And we see that within this time period, uh, has the pendulum really shifted? How do you sort of see these results? Uh, well, Prashant, these are local uh, body elections, of course. Uh, despite the fact that the elections were held all across the country and all the major urban centers in particular uh, uh, went for elections and it it seems that a, a large part of them, of course, not the majority, but where the major urban centers are located, where the majority of the uh, sorry Turkish uh, people live, all those regions have seen uh, uh, the victory of uh, opposition uh, Republican uh, uh, People's Party uh, candidates. Uh, in fact, uh, in uh, Istanbul, which is the largest city in the country, uh, 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 Imam Moglu, uh, sorry, Ikram Imam Moglu is basically has won with more than a, a million uh, votes margin uh, against AKP's, the ruling party's candidate. And similar things were repeated in Ankara, in other uh, cities, major cities. Uh, and, and that shows, as you rightly pointed out, that there is a shift from uh, AKP's uh, to uh, the opposition. Uh, particularly because uh, there are reasons, of course, uh, which are cited. Uh, one of the main reasons is 
though it has been less than a year since uh, uh, Erdogan won the last elections, um, and with, uh, of course, not great margin, but still significant margin, uh, that he has failed, his government has failed to deliver uh, on the promises which he made when he was uh, contesting, when he was campaigning for his election. And those were related to the massive inflation, uh, which has led to uh, the rise of the prices of essential commodity to a level which is which has not uh, nobody no country has seen for a very long time and the inflation is still uh, running above 50 percent uh, and it uh, uh, in the last uh, few months uh, so uh, the failure uh, to curb the inflation and the failure to deliver on the other major issues has basically led to you can say shift of as a part of AKP's voters to uh, the Republican Party. And that basically is shown in the election. And if this trend continues for the uh, uh, next few years, uh, it, it may, AKP would be in danger, uh, given the fact that, as I said before, these are the major population centers uh, where uh, uh, you can say majority of the Turkish population lives, and and that has voted decisively against. In fact, in Ankara again, the voting uh, winning margin is huge, uh, 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 more than 20, 25 percent. So that shows that the people, uh, majority of the people in urban uh, Turkey, has shifted away from AKP primarily because it has failed to deliver on the major issues. It's not to mention this is at least Erdogan's last term, unless. He decides to play with the constitution and sort of or effect some kind of uh, proxy power change. Well, uh, analysts were speculating that if uh, uh, AKP is able to win a part of uh, these cities, majority of these cities, uh, Erdogan might uh, would have gone to kind of amend the constitution and have uh, another term for himself because he's only 70 and given the fact that there are there is a trend in at the global level where uh, people with older uh, uh, age are uh, contesting elections and winning it may ha uh, would have been the possibility but now uh, given the fact that the as i said before uh, the decisive victory for the republican party would mean Republican People's Party would mean that Erdogan is not sure whether he will, if he contests again, will win the elections. And maybe uh, as during the campaign for the for Istanbul elections in particular, he said that this would be my last election. It seems that that is going to be uh, uh, the fact uh, till he his uh, term ends in 2028. Right. Abdul, thank you so much for that update. And that's all we have in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. Meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.